All right. All right, my friends, we, I got a special treat here today. I have Anthony uh, Giesick, uh, other, otherwise known as Clay Elam, from his YouTube channel on today. And uh, this guy literally, literally walked across the country, which is freaking insane. And I just, uh, how cool is that? I, it's just, it's, it's awesome. And, uh, and I said, you know, I was watching, I was looking up, uh, uh, Anthony, I found you because I was looking up South Dakota. I, for some reason, I got this intrigue about Rapid City, South Dakota. And one of your videos came up walking through from here to there. And I was like, man, that's cool. And I said, holy crap, this guy walks over the whole United States. And uh, I think I watched everything until he hit about Dothan, Alabama. And that's, you know, I, you know I, I live in, in Atlanta. So I was like, yeah, now it's kind of boring. I mean, boring for me because I, you know, I live here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I didn't watch any of those other ones. I probably should have actually because there might have been interesting things to it. I just said, ah. But I mean, I was, I've never been out the mid, you know, out that way um, in terms of Montana, South Dakota, and all that. So this is pretty cool. And then uh, I, I freaking enjoyed it immensely. Oh, it's beautiful. You definitely got to go sometime. Oh, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, it's uh, uh, it's on my hit list for sure. So, you know, just take some time to introduce yourself. You know, just tell everybody, you know, who you are. I know you're in Miami right now, but just a little bit of your backstory, if you would. All right. Well, uh, as you already said, my name is Anthony Gisick. So, basically, it, the thought came into my mind a few years ago um a year before i left on my walk i was just kind of thinking like i don't know just for some reason the thought popped into my mind like what if you could walk across the country yeah. right and so naturally i google it um and yeah there's a lot of nerds out there that have done that and i'm like hey you know it can be done it can be done. you don't need to be uh, extraordinary in any kind of way and it's kind of weighed on my head you know it's one of those thoughts you flirt with right but i never really thought about acting on it or anything but then i don't know just it kept it kept coming in my mind like uh, i, I kind of i kind of want to do this right and, and I mean, I figured I, I, kept, I kept thinking about it. And then, um, what was it? Okay, okay, yeah, it was about January or February of 2018. All right. When I was thinking, okay, I was thinking like logistically, I was just kind of fantasizing in my mind. If I had, if I had to do it, if I was going to do the walk, I have to do it right now because because of the season i had to do it in the early spring because i don't want to get caught in you know the middle of the country in like nebraska in the winter time or something oh, right? i was kind of thinking logistically and um and i don't know i was just i don't know just something was uh just pushing me to do it and just kept telling me okay do it do it you got to do it man you got to do it you've been thinking about this for too long and so i was like okay forget it i'm gonna i quit my job i sold my car i sold all my like major possessions that were holding me down and everything and I bought a backpack with a few supplies that I thought I'd need and everything. And I left uh, April 28th uh, from Seattle. And I was walking for about a year or 11 months until I got to Miami. So that's essentially the long story short version. Now, are you, are you from Seattle? Are you from Miami? How, I mean, I'm from Everett. I'm from Everett. It's about 25 miles north of Seattle. About. All right. Got gotcha. yeah, that area. Gotcha. And, and you said... Now, you're in Miami now. Are you renting a house or something like that? Or what? Uh... Yeah, I'm renting out a room. I've got some roommates. Okay, okay, gotcha. Did you like have a destination in uh, Miami? Yeah, just rent an apartment. Okay, you just said I'm gonna get to Miami, rent an apartment with some guys, and no, 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 that wasn't part of the plan. That wasn't part of the plan. So basically, when I got here, my last day of walking, it was March 18th of 2019, so about a year ago. And okay, I got here and I was running short on money, right? And I kind of wanted to, I don't know, I was kind of still in adventure mode. I was like, okay, this is like a new place, and it's kind of neat, right? Especially like walking throughout the country, you hear a lot of things like, oh my gosh, Florida, why would you head there, right? Yeah, right. Florida has a pretty bad reputation. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know why. Like there's the worst parts uh, that I could think of, right? But, um, but yeah, so I got here and I was like, I don't know, man, I'll just like stay for a little bit, right? But I was, okay, when I first got to Miami, I was renting a motel and I was running low on money. I had, oh. I think less than $2,000 in my bank account. And you oh, can't man. rent right. a motel for that long with that kind of money. And so what I did, I just went on the internet. I looked up rooms that were for rent, right? Because, okay, I need something more long-term, right? If I'm going to be doing this. I'll stay in a motel for a couple of days. And I found a room with some guy who could barely speak English, like everyone around here. And uh, he was actually, he was from Venezuela. And I, I rented a room from him. And uh, coincidentally, he needed someone. He was um, doing, he did marble polishing, right? That was his trade. And he needed an assistant. And he's like, okay, well, you seem like a strapping young man, okay, I could uh, use your help, right? And I was like, okay, that works out perfectly for me, right? So I got a job pretty much right away. And, um, and so, yeah, I was doing that for a bit. I was working with him for like five or six months until I got a different job. And then I eventually moved out, moved in with some um, other people. And yeah, that's, uh, that's why I'm still here in Miami. So are you question. working right now, you say, or? 
I, I was, um, I've been out of work. Okay. I've been out of work for a couple months to do the whole coronavirus thing, but my first day back is actually tomorrow. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So I haven't had any money troubles or anything. I was going to say, I mean, man, so you literally sold everything in Everett. You know what I'm saying? You say, I'm selling literally everything other than a backpack and some basic supplies. I'm walking to Miami. And when I get there, I'll rent a motel and just see how things shake out. Um, no, again, again, that wasn't part of a plan to stay in Miami or anything. I was just going to walk across the country and then fly back home. Right. Oh, that was okay, the idea. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So you're going to walk across the country, fly back. But then again, I was just still in kind of adventure mode. I was like, okay, that'd be cool. You know, a couple years of my life, a year or two of my life, if I'm living in a different part of the country, especially something like Miami, it's completely different than where I'm from. And I mean, I'll go back uh, sooner or later. But how old are you stay right here. now? I'm 24. Okay. Gotcha. And you're not married, I, was, I presume? No, 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 no. Okay. Gotcha. No, that, and I was thinking that when I left, like, that's the only reason I can do it is I was like, okay, before I don't have any kind of, you know, I don't have a girlfriend or any kind of commitments that I need to hold to. And so I was like, oh, if, I, if there is an opportunity in my life to do it, it's right now. And so, yeah, at that time I was 22 when I left. Right. Has anyone else done it on, put it on YouTube like you did? There, there have been a few people. Okay. Um, yeah, I've seen. I mean, I don't think as uh, extensively. And again, my, I actually didn't, that was a last minute thing, me putting it on YouTube. Yeah. I just had my phone on me and I figured, okay, if I look back 40 years from now, I want some kind of, I did it mostly for me. I did it mostly for me. I just kind of wanted something to remind me like, oh yeah, I remember them in there. I remember doing this and that. Uh, and before I left, to be honest, I, I wasn't, I said at the beginning of my first video, if you, and just by the way, for the viewers, so my YouTube channel is called Cleelum, C-L-E-E-L-U-M. Um, oh, is that how you say Clee? Uh, Clee? Cleelum, Cleelum. Yeah, it's a city. It's a city. Yeah, a city. no, I, I, man, we, uh, my, I took my, I have four kids, uh, Anthony, and my, uh, my second oldest daughter, we went to, Wa I've never been to Washington. And we went last October, and we went through Clee Elm. I said, "Man, this place is flipping awesome." I mean, it's tiny. Yeah, but yeah. We got the, we went to McDonald's and uh, and I don't know. That's that's the McDonald's in Clee Elm. You know what I'm talking about? That's where I created my YouTube channel. There's only oh, one McDonald's in Clee Elm, so it's the same place. I was in the McDonald's using their Wi-Fi, and because I didn't even have a YouTube channel when I left, um, I just started like filming little clips. That's me. flipping crazy, man. We uh. Yeah. We went to that, that McDonald's and actually, A, they were polite, and B, the ice cream machine worked. Because at least down here in the southeast, the McDonald's are notorious for their freaking milkshake and ice cream machines not working. My, my uh, daughter and I are like, whoa, people are nice here, and the ice cream machine works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. I, man, I loved it. I, I, I was stunned at how beautiful Washington. I, I'm still, to this day, I'm like, damn, I never knew. Is that, is that gorgeous? So why'd you name it Cleo? Because that's where you started your YouTube channel? Yeah, that's just, that's just where I was. I was like, yeah, you know, that's kind of a neat sounding name. I, there, honestly, there was not that much thought put into it. And again, I just did it for me and a few friends and family members that now, would want to be posted on my journey, mostly. Is, is your mom or somebody who's related to you posted? Is that your mom or your sister? I've I seen a couple of people that post like, you know, I'm looking, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know what it was, they, but they called you by your name and all that. Is that, is that your mom or your sister or something like that? Or it's probably, it's probably some family member. All right. Were they nervous about you doing this? Yeah, I actually, I waited till the last minute to, t I waited till the last minute to tell my mom that I was leaving for that purpose. I knew just her personality and everything, you know, very maternal about her kids. Understandably, I'd be the same way, but I, I waited till the last minute to tell her that I was leaving. I just told her I was going to move out and she's like, okay, whatever. And then I told her about a week before I left what my actual plans were. <laughs> and of course, she tried to convince me uh, to not do it. And she took me over to my grandparents' house. And then so, so my grandpa, her dad, could try to convince me not to do it. <laughs> um, because, uh, yeah, they just, I don't know, they thought something bad would happen, naturally. Right, right, man, that's crazy. Now, were you like calling her on the route and stuff? Like, you just, you know, call, say, "Hey, mom, I'm in Nebraska. I'm good to go." Or how many? Times yeah, she, she, she bought, she bought me a Garmin GPS. Okay. Um, before we left, and it costs a lot of money. It, and it, but it has uh, this feature where basically you can send a ping. Uh, that gives her my exact coordinates. It'll show her a map, show her precisely where I'm at. And every night when I went to sleep, I would always send her the coordinates of where I was camping at. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. So that, that made so she mom... always knew where I would be sleeping out for the night, right? So if she just stopped, yeah, yeah made her feel better. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. All right. So how when I how much money did you start with? Like three, five thousand bucks or something like that? Or how much? Oh, more than that. Oh, uh, had, yeah, yeah. I had like I think around fifteen thousand. Okay. Just say you had it like in a you know, debit you didn't have it cash or anything, I can't imagine. Oh no, no, no. Okay, gotcha. All right, so 
you start in Seattle, and I remember just watching that. I was like, this is freaking – did you ever say to yourself, man, I'm turning around, or did you say, I'm, you know, freaking hell's bells, I'm going to make this, I don't care what happens, you know what I'm saying? No, honestly, leaving was the hardest part. Uh, yeah. Getting started. And my first, my first day walking, when I was in Seattle, I went through Seattle. I went over the bridge to Mercer Island, and it was pouring rain, as you can imagine. And I, it was so miserable. It, it was actually – it was one of the worst days of my life, probably, looking back on it. I was soaked to the bone, soaking wet. I was shivering. I remember, I remember me on Mercer Island underneath a bridge just to get out of the rain. Yeah. I was sitting underneath this bridge just shivering cold, and I was thinking, oh, my gosh, what did I do? Right, this is just day one. Right. <laughs> but – how did you keep going? I was said that. Uh, that didn't actually happen too much. That was one of the worst days. That was yeah, but you days. didn't know that at that point. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how'd you keep going, man? It's crazy. I, just, I, I mean, I always look at it one day at a time. I, what I did when I was walking, I would always, um, you know, have Google Maps on on my phone. And I would just basically look at the destination. Like, okay, here, where's, where, where do I want to get to today? And I would just look at it one day at a time, right? Like, I so was never had- thinking... You Florida. didn't plan it out, like, I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm going there, like, in advance of you to sell, just take it as far until I, you don't. I did, I did, I did plan it out. Okay. Um, I planned it out until, all the way to Mississippi, and then I got kind of lazy, and I had to leave anyway, uh, and I figured by the time I'm in Mississippi, I can figure things out. Um, and so I had a route, I didn't stick exactly to it, but basically the thing about it is, the reason I had to do a route is because when you're going through states like Montana and Wyoming, t- uh, towns are very, very far yeah. apart. Right. And you can't, you know, you can't just walk and hold that much water on your back uh, for, you know, several days at a time. That's not, that's not practical. So what I had to do, I had to find a route that, that kind of went along the closest towns. And sometimes, you know, I had to go two, three days or even more without coming across the town. But I always had everything planned out as far as water uh, goes. And, and places to sleep, too, or you just, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? No, like, I had a tent. I packed a tent in my backpack, and my plan was just any spot that I can find yeah. that's out of view, I'm going to camp there. And, the, uh, okay, I can tell you, the first that, that's another thing about the first day. My first time doing that, and, again, I don't have any experience, like, as an outdoorsman or anything right. like that, right? The first time I did that, I was in Lake Sam- near Lake Samaritan in Issaquah. And I just found some bushes and I set my tent up and, and it looked like one of the spots that like homeless people usually camp out, right? I just found this little spot that was kind of away from view and I set up my tent. And again, I'm soaking wet, I'm freezing cold. And fi- finally, and, it, and my hands were so cold, it took me a, a really long time to set up my tent because I could barely move them. And then right when I set it up, I remember across this creek that I assumed nothing was over there. I thought it was just a little wooded area. Right. I saw this woman walking her dog and she looked like the kind of woman that would call the police because there's some squatter. And I was, I remember thinking, oh my God. gosh, no, please, please don't call the cops on me. Cause I did not want to get kicked out. And again, I was like terrified. This is my first you, time you, doing this. You saw a Karen, this. a Karen, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, she turned out not to be a Karen. So it, it worked out for me. <laughs> but you didn't know. And that was your first know. day, man. You're I'm like, I'm freezing, I'm day. wet. I'm going to see a Karen. And you're like, at this point, it can only get better or it's going to mm-hmm. get worse. But man. Oh my good! I remember you. At one point, you said you you stopped and uh, you were behind some bushes and uh, like a state trooper pulled up near you, and then you went up to him or something like that. And you're he was like, "Whoa, what the hell? What? what I can't." You remember that? Story? Yeah, I was in Eastern Washington. I was in Eastern Washington, okay. and Eastern Washington's very different than Western Washington. Once you go past the mountains, everything's arid. Yeah, and right. dry, and like you know the canyons and everything, right? And so it was much harder to find a spot to camp like that when there's no forest for you to go hide in. And so I had to find these big shrubs next to the side of a road. Yeah, and I set up my tent, and I was exhausted. Like, the first, the first month or so of walking, it's, it's just a blur. Like, it, it was exhausting. Anyway, yeah, I set up my tent. I got inside of it, finally, at the end of a long day. And, yeah, this cop pulled up right next to me. And I, I was, oh, my gosh, no, please don't kick me out. And I stayed in my tent for about five minutes, and I was like, okay, I don't know what's taking this guy so long. So, finally, I went approached him. And, yeah, he was, he was shocked to see me. He's like, whoa, where'd you come from? And then I, I told him, I explained to him what I'm doing. Like, look, I'm just, uh, I'm walking across the country, right? And I needed a place to camp. Um, is right here fine? He's like, hey, look, you know, as long as, if no one calls the police on me and says it's their property or something, you're totally fine. I don't care. That's crazy. I, I was reading that story. I was like, oh, this, this could be bad. And then, uh, and then he's like, whoa, whatever. And I was like, what was that guy doing? Trying to take a nap or something? I don't know. It was funny. But now... Did people, like, when you were doing this, do they know in advance, you know, Doth- I think in Dothan, Alabama, or someplace, maybe in Missouri, maybe Kansas City, Missouri, 
you know, you're hanging out with some people. Do they know that you were doing like people say, hey, there's, you know, there's Anthony or, or Clay. Or, or, no, 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 no one knew. No one knew. It's so actually funny. Because, people. If yeah, you yeah. Looking down, I got a dog here who every now and again wants to interrupt me. So if you see me, what, what I'm doing is my little puppy is like, hey, pet me, pet me. So just FYI. Um, so okay. no one had any idea that you were coming through town. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like it was just random people you're meeting. No, no, yeah, it was just uh, random people for the most part. Like, um, I told, I told this in one of my videos when I was in a small town. The, t the population is like eighty, I think. In in Montana, it's called um, it's called Ovando, and it's really small. It's really nice. The people are extremely nice. Everyone, right? Anyway, well, I was in this uh, little restaurant, and I'm these two cyclists and they were from kansas city and i told them you know we got to talking you know, i'm walking across the country they're like hey we live in kansas city right and they gave me their phone numbers and said when you get to kansas city you know give us a call and you can crash at our house and so i did that when i got to kansas city like it's like two and a half months later or something oh man i called them up and i stayed at their house for a few days no kidding and they kind of, yeah they kind of showed me around the place i i, I like it kansas city's a nice a nice city i like it man and then how many so i mean i remember the the one story like a guy on a bike you're on some trail and he left something on the ground and uh it turned out to be money and like a, a Bible verse or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like how many, you know, you had to come across some assholes, right? And there had to be some guys that were not nice to you. I mean, it seemed like mostly you talked about the people who were nice to you. There had to be some people who weren't cool with you, right? Honestly, I didn't really have any bad experiences with people, right? I mean, there will be people that are kind of sketchy. Right. Um, especially go to uh, when I when I got into Mississippi, right? If you're in like northern, like between uh, Tupelo and Memphis, yeah. it's just country and it's very very shady. Everyone's shady, right? And you'll get weird people like kind of looking at you, strange. Yeah. Um, which is in stark contrast to places like Wyoming and South Dakota, like those in Nebraska. People there are extremely nice, right? Yeah. And they they don't think in a suspicious way right. at all. Right. But yeah, like it'll be people kind of give you a weird vibe, but and okay, actually, yeah, there was there was one time in Mississippi, I was um walking down the road, <laughs> and this man and woman in some rickety old car came and stopped, and because I was I was filming around, you know, as for my videos, right? When I was in right, right. town, I would always film the town, and and they said, hey, you know, we called the cops and said that there's some guy like filming around, blah, blah, blah. Like, what are you doing here? Right. And these were like, they look like drug addicts. Right. Like there's a big meth problem out there. Um, and they basically just kind of intimidate. And I kind of did the ta tactic of just be nice to them. Right. Like yeah. they're given this bad energy. Right? right. And I would just kind of respond literally and very nicely right. 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 Uh, to them. And yeah, I mean, they drove away, but I don't, I don't really consider that a bad encounter. It's just bad right. people. Right? Like, or, weird people right right it's uh did you ever so you never got you know stuck and, up so or? i don't consider that a bad encounter no the positive the po no the positives far outweigh the uh the negative people I, again negatives are i can only give you small anecdotes like that when it comes right. to negative there's never anything that's actually been threatening and that, that's gotta make you feel good right i mean the fact that you yeah, literally yeah, yeah. walked across america and people of all shapes and sizes other than you know some weirdos who might be addicts um Everyone else was pretty cool there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and especially, like, I told you already, when I was in Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, like, those states, like, people are, it's almost frighteningly nice. Um, they, like, this, I remember I was, in, I was in some town. This is just one anecdote, but this kind of thing has happened many times in, the, in those states. I went into some town, you know, I don't know anyone. It's all just farmland around. I went to some town. I went in some bar to get a hamburger uh, before I found a spot to camp. And I sat next to this guy. He's like, hey, you look, you're a new face. Oh, uh, what's your name? I was, I was like, Anthony. Uh, he's like, hey, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm walking across the country. I'm like, do you know if there's anywhere to camp around here? Because that, that was always my main priority. Looking for a place to pitch my tent and sleep. He's like, well, I got a house. You know, I got a spare bedroom. You can, uh, you know, come have dinner with us, blah, blah, blah. So I went to his house. He gave me delicious dinner, gave me a shower and everything, washed my clothes, uh, all that good stuff. But that's just one of many examples that I have of that. Like, that's what I mean. People are frighteningly nice. Like, they just see a stranger, and then within 10 seconds, they're already inviting and you to dinner. That, I tell you, that, that brings tears to your eyes. Because you always hear the negative stuff, Anthony. Everyone's freaking a-holes. Everyone's out to get you. Everyone this. You're like, I mean, your experience says the exact opposite. You're just some dude walking across the country. And other some, you know, from some tweakers. I mean, you're, everyone else is pretty nice to you. It's pretty cool, if you ask me. Um, 
How about animals? You see any animals? They come up on you and scare the hell out of you or what? One bear. I yeah. saw one bear. It was, uh, it was right across. Um, when I, right on the border of my, uh, Idaho and Montana, I had to go over some mountain pass. And the mountain pass forms the, the state line between the two states. And right when I got across the mountain pass and got out of all like the snow, so I went down in elevation a bit. I can't, there was a, uh, right on the road that I was on, there was a bear just sniffing the ground, walking in front of me. And then right when it saw me, it just sprinted off. I had bear spray um, that I would have used if it was necessary, but, and it was, it was right in hand. Like I had it right in the little compartment on my backpack, like for the water. Um, but, and okay, so I saw, what other animals? I saw a fox in Wyoming. I saw, I never seen a badger before I got to um, South Dakota. I saw an right. angry badger. I never realized how angry they were. Um, rattlesnakes, several rattlesnakes, Montana and South Dakota. I saw a bunch of elk, a bunch of mooses in oh. Wyoming. Uh, yeah. Up in the mountains. Yeah. So I saw, I saw a fish there. I'm sure. Hey, I'm hey bison, you say bison going through Wyoming? No, no, no. unfortunately not. No, they're relegated to uh, small areas if you, right. if you oh, look up their man. habitat. Like, in, there's a lot of Yellowstone. They they have some prairies with bison in South Dakota, yeah. but not not where I was near. What, uh, like, when you saw these animals, were you, I mean, these animals you never seen before, you must have been like, man, have you just must have been sitting there thinking, I'm literally walking across country, seeing these animals I've never even seen before, and uh, that's just got to feel, I don't know, man, it's just got to feel great, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Yeah, yeah. I, I mean... I yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I mean, I'm from Washington. I've seen elk. I've oh. seen, you know, I've seen that kind of, I mean, maybe a moose. Have I seen mooses? Yeah. Not that I recall. Maybe I hadn't before. But a fox and a badger and maybe a moose. Maybe those are the only things I haven't seen before. Did you ever get to the point where you're running so low on water and food that you're like, yikes, I, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna be in a world of hurt if I don't find something here pretty soon. No, not really, actually. I ate um, very little. It was actually surprising how little food I needed um and yeah just mainly buy things like um you know just granola checks checks yeah. mix that kind of stuff and um but usually before I left the town I'd also try to bring some real food like I try yeah. to get some I don't know some burritos or something that I could pack in that are only good for that day yeah and stuff like that but no I never had any crises with food or water I plan that pretty well yeah no, and definitely. a lot of people a lot of people pull over too like when you're out in the part of the country that you you know you'd have to worry about running out of water, like Wyoming, Montana. A lot of people just, you know, they'll pull over and they'll hand you bottles of water, you know? Yeah. They usually at first ask you if you need a ride, right? And yeah. they'll say, no thanks, and they'll give you some water and stuff. And so, yeah, no, people, people look out for others out there. So no, I didn't, I never had any issues with that. What, uh, did you do any training for a physical, I mean, I mean. Nothing at all, no. <laughs> no, I just left. No, the first, the first several days, I, I woke up extremely, extremely sore. Oh. Cause not only the walking, but I had a heavy backpack yeah. on my back, you know, weighed down with, you know, had a sleeping bag, an inflatable pillow, a tent, uh, all my food, all my extra clothes, um, all that stuff. And don't, not to mention the water. That's what weighs you down the most. Yeah. But um, actually when I was about halfway through um, Montana in a town called Townsend, I bought one of those like little push carts that homeless people use, you know, that yeah. walk through cities. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and I, I put my backpack and everything in there and I could make so much more progress in a day with all that weight off my back. Oh man. Yeah. But prior to that, that wasn't really an option to use because I was going over so many mountain passes that yeah. wouldn't have been accessible. Yeah. With a, with a cart. Oh. Um, so, so yeah, I bought it, I bought it then. And then I used one of those, I mean, they would break down every now and again. So I'd have to Get a new one but i use things like that for the rest of the walk all the way to miami imagine pushing one of those things up a mountain i mean that just sounds oh that i mean that sounds painful just right i mean i guess you still got carried on your back but i don't see something about pushing up this big oh man i'd usually pull it if i was going uphill i'd pull it if i was going downhill i'd put, have it in front of me and just kind of keep it from rolling all the way you know so man, I mean, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad when I was in the army, uh, Anthony, uh, we do these 25 mile road marches and we just do it rifles and, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, just basically bullets and stuff like that. And, uh, that was tough dude. And doing those, like we do it once every six months or something like that, but doing that once every six months was, was tough. Cause when you're done, you are freaking exhausted. Your feet are just raw as can be, you're exhausted and you're just dead to the world. 
get up and doing that again and again and again. I mean, you know, that's what they used to do old, old soldiers back in the old day. I don't know how they used to do that stuff, man. It's crazy. I mean, the idea of walking it just is nuts. I mean, every single day, your knee, why don't you just freaking sore? Your shoulders just sore. Your knees, your feet are just raw as can be. Do you just get, do you just get used to it after a while or what? Um, yeah, you, I mean, you get used to it and, you know, you get more fit after doing, yeah. after doing it day after day. And, but no, I mean, no, the soreness was really bad, especially by the time I got to Idaho, it just got worse and worse. It was actually, I was thinking like, I might be doing permanent damage to my body uh, because it, it was actually very bad. Like I couldn't stand up some mornings. Like I'd have to take like 10 or 15 minutes just to be able to stand up out of my tank because my feet, yeah. my, yeah, my feet, my feet were like, they were literally swollen. Like they looked different I, at the joints and I have flat feet too. Right. Like very flat feet. If you see my fleet feet, they're like, you know, a piece of paper, which uh, like that would have disqualified me from being in the army back in the day. Right. Right? So imagine walking across the country like that. So they're definitely not designed for that kind of um, cross country travel. But, eh, you know, I just figured, you know, it's, it's worth the permanent damage if I get it. <laughs> Other than that first night in Washington, were you ever as cold again? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the coldest I was was in Mississippi. Really? Uh, believe it or not. Yeah. Cause, okay. Remember, I t remember I told you earlier. When I was planning the trip, I had to keep in mind the season, right? My yeah. thinking was, okay, by the time that the fall comes around, like October, November, I'm going to be down in the South where right. I thought I'd never been to the South before. I figured it's always warm. Right? I see the movies and it's all really hot. People sitting on the porch drinking their sweet tea. So, um, yeah, I'm assuming that I'm not going to have any problems. But, no, it, was actually, it actually started snowing when I was in Tupelo, Mississippi, <laughs> which, by the way, is where Elvis was born. There's a lot hey. of statues of him hey. around. Hey. Um, yeah, I was, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And sleeping at nighttime, it was freezing, freezing cold. It was miserable. It what was month miserable. was that? You're in Mississippi? It is November. Okay. Yeah. And it was snowing, and you know, that's the far deep south, and you're freezing. Yeah. Oh, man. I, 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 was, I was extremely surprised. I was like, I, I didn't know it snows down here in Mississippi. <laughs> but, I don't know. Apparently it does. I learned my lesson. But, yeah, no, those, those nights, there was, oh, there were some nights that were – excruciating oh. like my tent was like frozen yeah uh, right. when i woke up and it was like you know did uh, you build a fire or anything like that or no no oh. and especially where i was was one of those kind of sketchy areas that yeah. you know, people don't want you i mean a lot as you can imagine i had to go on to people's private property quite a right. bit because right. there's nowhere else to camp right so i'd have to hop up a fence go in some bushes in some little area where i thought i wouldn't be seen and i would just set up my tent at dusk time and then just get out first thing in the morning yeah, but um, but yeah, no. It, it, so there was the fire wasn't an option. How how did you charge your phone? Like, I mean, I know you when you stopped and got some chow and stuff, you probably charged then. But I mean, my goodness, you I had a portable charger. I um that you could charge up and get a couple charges out of. Okay. Also, okay. I didn't really use my phone too much. Um, so you, you weren't listening to music or anything? On I mean, what were you? For the most part, no. Um, later on in the walk, I did start listening. I mean, I, I listened to a bit, like in my. Montana and stuff like nothing I didn't listen to anything in Washington didn't listen to anything in Idaho and Montana is kind of when I started listening to stuff because I was I mean I had a better feel for my phone and its life and right, how long right, it would be okay, until I get it. to the next place I can charge it man when you were out there at night were you able to see stars like you'd never seen before you know what I'm saying yeah like for the first time in my life when I was in eastern Washington I think I was next to Ephrata um it's a little town and I was um and again this is still when I at the beginning of my walk when I was very apprehensive about sleep in places I wasn't supposed to be. So basically I had to hop this little uh, barbed wire fence that was a, it was a little wildlife refuge, right? And there's these many, many uh, buttes, I guess you could call them, that, that were everywhere. I mean, they're very small. They're not like, you know, big Arizona. Right, right, right. And so I, I, I climbed up some hill and I was just on that little area and I set up, uh, I didn't, no, no, I didn't set up my tent. I, I laid down my mat because I also had um, a mat that I slept on. Right. I just laid down my mat, mat, got out my sleeping bag and slept underneath. Um, I slept in my sleeping bag, and it, when the sun went down around 10 or 11 o'clock, I looked up in the sky, and for the first time in my life, I'd never seen the Milky Way before, right? I could see, like, you know, I had a, a kind of, it was kind of fuzzy, but you could, there's clearly something visible there, and it actually gave me a mini panic attack. I kind of like, ah, I was like, okay, I need to stop looking at this, because, you know. That's um, crazy. Yeah, no, that was, uh, it was incredible. No, that's when they talk about light pollution. We don't see, yeah, we don't yeah, even, yeah. we don't want to see it anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, what was, if you had to say one place, 
uh, that was the be most beautiful place that surprised you the most. What, any, anything jump out at you? Um, I definitely have to say Montana. Yeah. I've never been to, I mean, I've been to Montana several times before, but you know, Montana's a big place. Um, I was in the Flathead Reservation, um, which is an Indian reservation, like in, you know, the Western Montana, in the mountains. And I'm telling you, like the mountains were just majestic, the way they just jetted up out of the ground yeah. with their icy peaks. And, and the time of year, everything was still, come, like the, the mountains were 100% covered in snow. It's not like there was just a little bit of snow at the top. They were completely white. And no, it just looks like something out of a postcard. And I was thinking, yeah. I remember thinking, and then there was like just these meadows with flowers and everything. Yeah. No, yeah. it was straight out of like, like a, a movie. But yeah, yeah. I, I definitely say that. That was probably the most beautiful place I've been. When you got, so up there is dry, and then you get to the south, it's so humid. That's where, I'm, again, I'm in right north Atlanta. It's humid down here. Could you notice a difference in breathing, you know what I'm saying, from where you were coming from to where you are even right now? Yeah, I was actually in Nebraska. When I was in eastern Nebraska, that's really the first time in my life I felt real humidity uh, when I was walking. I, I didn't really know what that feeling was like. And I just started chafing in the groin area. Yeah. It was really miserable, as, as you can <laughs> imagine, right? Because I'm walking all day. And I was like, oh, my gosh, there's something I, I got to do. Actually, I, uh, not to be vulgar, but I had to take off my underwear uh, a few days doing that. just so Because they were made out of cotton, right? Right, right. Now I wear everything. In, in, in Miami, everything has to be polyester because right. there's too much humidity for cotton. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I learned about humidity real quick. Uh, so, all right. So, what's uh, what's next for you? I mean, this is it's just it's. I just I think so. I, obviously, I'm going to show everybody your your YouTube channel, Anthony. And I just hope people subscribe, and I hope you keep doing stuff because I think it's great. I think you got you got guts, dude. Uh, my goodness, I bet you're going far in places. What what's the next step for you, man? I mean, what uh, you're not going to get some corporate nine to five? I can't see you going work some corporate nine to five. You know, just punching you know, moving paper what what what's the future hold for you any idea yeah, i mean basically i want to i want to save up a um, money like a good amount and then i want to go out and do some more traveling somewhere yeah. and i like i like that kind of traveling like i don't want to walk i don't want to do any more walking <laughs> i'm good on that but just maybe like a bicycle and just i don't know you're good on that man that <laughs> and maybe, uh, some obscure part of the world preferably that's safe and just, just wander. I like sleeping outside under the stars and, and all that stuff. Oh, and man. so, yeah, I want to save up some money and do that. But, but yeah, just for now, I'm working and uh, just saving up money. All right. So, you know, let's say you save another 15000 bucks, for instance. Uh, have you thought, you know, like, hey, that, I'm going to go to Calgary or, or somebody? I mean, any thoughts that the next place you want to travel would be? I mean, uh, I was thinking maybe like Central Asia. Oh. Uh, yeah. Like if you go to like, uh, like Kazakhstan, especially. Especially, I really want to go there at some point in my life. I want to go there. I want to go to um, like some places in South America are very beautiful, but they're not the safest, right? I don't want to get kidnapped by some paramilitary and right, right. have my ears sent back to my family. And if you want to see the rest of them, you got to pay uh, X, Y, Z. But uh, why Kazakhstan? What, what's the uh, the culture? Oh, just beautiful. No, I'm very into I'm very into the history of that region, like the Turks, you know, the Mongols, yeah. just like all the uh, the. Kaganates and all this and that that they have there. I'm very fascinated. And they still have a lot of um, historical ruins. There's a lot to see there um, oh, his, uh, historically that I'm that's, interested in. That's cool. No, that's freaking awesome. But, I mean, that's just a thought, you know, not, not necessarily. There's a lot of places I'm interested in. Yeah. All right. So, you, so that's your goal. You're going to save up some money. You know what I'm saying? You're obviously living cheap right now. Save up some money, you yeah. know, get a plane ticket to go to someplace and then uh, just do some travel and some YouTube videos uh, while you're doing it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Are, are you? Did you ever go to college or anything? I mean, you got a degree in. I, I got a two-year degree, but I mean, you know, that's not worth too much these days. So. No, it's definitely not. So, do you yeah. feel like I need to get a college degree, or you feel like, hey, I can learn anything I need to do on YouTube? Not really, not really. Um, I think I'm. I, mean, I don't know. Again, getting one, there's not that many. I've known too many people that have great degrees and do horrible jobs. And there's too, a lot of people that I've met that have no degree and that have great jobs. Yeah. So it, no, if anything, it's just I'd want to focus in on a certain skill and um, build that up. Man. I wouldn't want to go back to school. No, that's good. Anthony, I tell you, I'm 49, man. I got four kids. And I tell you, the degree, look, I, you know, I went in the army to get it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I didn't take debt for that. But some of these guys get out of school with $100,000 debt. I'm like, you can't do anything but go work for corporate America. That's what you got to do. And then you're just going to be you know, freaking a slave to the grind. It sucks, dude. I'm just telling yeah. you, don't, don't do that. Especially if you have big goals, you want to go to these places and, and see the world and do travel. And I mean, just 
I, I just think it's freaking inspirational, man. I, I just, I love it. I, I hope that you keep posting stuff because I think it's great. And I hope that, you know, I mean, I don't know if, if you're going to ever write a book or something like that, but you know, the fact that you're doing a video on YouTube to show your 40 year old, no, your, well, your, or your 65 year old self, that's what I did. I mean, how awesome is that, man? I, yeah. I just think it's fantastic. And I, I just love the inspirational stuff too, because right now we're all caught up in all the anger and everything. And I get some of that's legit, but I just say, you know, this, the world's a good place. And you know, America's, I don't know. I mean, every, there's always assholes, but you know, I think you, what you did is you showed that not everybody's like that. And it's, uh, I, don't know, I think that helps. I don't know, if anything, very few people are like that. Most people are pretty nice. Most people are pretty nice. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Anything, yeah. uh, I'll let you get out of here, but anything you want to, you know, any, I mean, I'll put links to your, you know, you don't have a website or anything, do you, or anything like that or, Oh, uh, no, I don't. Okay. No, right. I mean, the, the link to my channel is good enough. All right. Right on, man. Uh, I'll put links to your channel. And if, uh, you know, if people want to support you or something like that, I'm going to, you know, make sure they subscribe to your channel. And, uh, and that way, if, you know, if you ever get around, you know, where you're doing another agenda, you know, let people know, man. I'll promote as hell. And, you know, you never, never know. You might be able to raise some funds for your efforts. Because, uh, I mean, I, who knows? I'd, be, I'd donate to it if you can raise some money to go out to – Kazakhstan, I don't know anything about it, but it'd be interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So just uh you know, keep posting stuff, keep looking at your YouTube channel, just keep being you, brother. It's freaking I love it. So I appreciate you being here, man. Really do. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Right on. And uh and I'll post this stuff. If anything comes up, you know, just uh just send me an email if you got a new mission. I'd love to I'd love to promote it for you, would you please? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks, Anthony. We'll see you, man. All right, man. Good talking Thank to you. Bye bye.